it has been a few days. I'll drop the actual amount of days down in the description on the little thingy. Um, this is all pretty dry. Even as we get further back in there, all the way in the back, it's still a little green. But for the most part, this is all dry and crunchy. So I will be wearing a mask while we do this. It's also a lot of pollen. But we're going to run this through the chipper, and then we'll run a separate set that's dry if we have time. After, if we get all this fed through, we'll run uh, wet stuff through the chipper too and try some silage and see how those both turn out different. Um, but if we blast through all this and I run out of time because I've got limited time before I've got to go check out a job for somebody and then teach a class, then I'll just keep cutting and stacking and then let it dry too. But either way, I want to get it all knocked down and try to get this stuff out of the way. Let's head on over to the chipper. So here's our little chipper. I've got a tarp laid out for it to just blast out onto, and then we'll scoop it all into bags. Um, this is just a little chipper from Lowe's. So this is my first time using it. I did uh, fire it up to make sure that it actually worked. I'm 90% sure one tire is bigger than the other. Um, that tire has always been flat since we got it. Uh, but I aired it up, and then now it leans over that way. So I don't know what the deal is with that. It chipped through some uh, green ragweed that hadn't been dried pretty well down to this point. Um, I just stuffed them in there to test it. And it blew it out all over the place before I had the tarp down. Um, yeah, I'm going to throw you guys on time lapse. And we're going to see how this bad boy does with this stuff. Definitely just an experiment here. So it's a little hard to tell now that I've just sat there and moved it all around. But we did do um, a little over a third to a half of it. Um, you see that's all hollowed out back here now. Um, there's still a lot, everything that's behind all of this and around was still bone dry, but I'm running out of time. I've got to, I've got to head off to look at a job and teach a class like I've already said, but so I've got to head off and do that now. So we're going to put a stop to this. Um, but some of the stuff that was in this deepest corner that wasn't near the spot there where there's some air can get through had started to, it's not really much mold, but there's some mold. It was just really wet, still dense in the centers. So spread it all out to let it dry off. There's just a small little patch of it. Um, and this is only for feeders. This won't even go to breeders. So I'm not worried about mycotoxin causing infertility or anything. Um, this is just to give us some dried grain hay or dried hay stuff over the winter to mix in with their grain. Um, sorry, long day already. We did like lose a ton on the ground by having to lug it out here, then stripping the stuff off. So we had started just by chipping all of it. But what I've noticed, was this is what the chips and if we go down to the bottom where the start was <clears throat> so the bottoms are still just pretty much just stem um all the leaves just even the slightest breeze was causing it to all blow off over there and get yep. lost um i put these up to try it at these benches but i've got a that we're going to be throwing away and I'm going to refinish them. Um, I put them up to try to catch most of it from just blowing off over here too. So this is just stem matter now. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Either use it as mulch or maybe use it to try to grow some oyster mushrooms or something. I don't know. We'll see. What we wound up having to do was just strip the leaves off first and then chip and you can see the damage hey scott father-in-law driving by um, we've got about a full barrel's worth of the shredded off leaves from maybe half to a third of that so i expect to get 
uh, at least two. And these are packed. We were standing on them, squishing it down. And it's almost full. So I expect to get at least two to three barrels worth out of just what we have here in the barn and have already done. Um, and then that's maybe a third of what I have on the farm to cut. So as soon as this is all done, I'm going to start cutting and stacking back in here to dry again. And we'll do this all over again. Um, and I know, I know a lot of people may be thinking that like, oh, that's a ton of work for very little stuff. But to be honest, that was like all told, I may have two, three hours in this because that was like an hour of us doing this step right here. Um, two hours, I think, in cutting it all down and 30 minutes lugging it over. So all told, that's not that much labor for a full barrel of dried crushed hay that I'd probably spend for that much, 30, 40 bucks um, of stuff that I don't know the quality. I know that this stuff is good. And honestly, I think I'll look up what a bag or two of that um, dried, dried alfalfa is what this would be comparable to, except I believe ragweed, giant ragweed actually has a higher protein content. I'll drop also in the comments or the little subtexty here, you'll be already be reading it, but the difference between protein alfa, protein content in alfalfa and protein content in uh, giant ragweed. Um, so, and then it should be actually even a little higher because we let it go to pollen. So the pollen should produce quite a bit of that too. Um, and I'm really only expecting to use like one or two scoops a day, um, maybe like a coffee can, in with their ration of, uh, the soaked whey and grain mix that we do. So really like, I'm not expecting to have to use a lot to get the benefit of an insane amount, really honestly, like one can of just the dried leaves would have to be like 40 or 50 stems easy. The amount that's on just one plant, I think that's pretty worth it. Like that's going to make up a lot of our hay ration over the winter with one to two cans per head per day. Um, yeah, I think we'll do pretty good. And it's gonna get soaked. So I'm not worried about any random stems being sharp in there that's getting missed because I've been letting the feed sit for a few minutes and thoroughly soak. And most of the stems that are left in there are just real small stems that I can crush with my hands real easy. So I think just in the process of the mixer going through, it'll break them up and then they'll get soaked and softened. Um, I think, honestly, this is probably going to pay out to be pretty close to what if I had to buy something it would be, but now I don't have to buy it and I know it came from my farm, so I'm keeping that nutrient cycle the same here on the farm. There's zero uh, fuel miles on it. Uh, I'm sorry, my beard makes me look crazy right now. My wife is probably right, I do need to trim. Um, and we get to take a product that we're, we would have just chipped and thrown away, and now I'll either get some wood chips to be able to mulch something with, or maybe we'll give a go at growing some oyster mushrooms in it and see how that goes. Just uh, stay tuned. Thank you guys for keeping up to date on this update. Once we're done doing all this for the end of the year, I'll do a third video to wrap out and show how much we wound up getting done in barrels and roughly how many hours I thought we spent on this project and then how much it would have cost me to buy something equivalent to it from the store to see whether or not this kind of paired out the same um, in cost versus time spent. So uh, if you guys like this content, remember to hit that subscribe button so you keep seeing more. If you like this video and want to see more videos like this, hit the like button on the video. And if you got questions, you just want to say hey, um, then hit, hit that comment section down below and let me know because that does help drive our engagement and it helps me know what's going on out there and how you guys feel about what we're putting out. So thank you guys and you have a good one.